Hey guys, what's up? It's Hobbit Assassin 08 here with another tech review. This one, uh, this time, is the Akai Professional MPK Mini, the portable uh, production keyboard and uh, slash drum pad. Um, this device is basically for those of you who like to make beats and uh, like a very portable, affordable, and on the go option. And so uh, here we go. This is a great product, um, and so let's get right into it. Uh, here is the product itself, the Akai uh, MPK Mini, and like I said, very small, very lightweight, extremely portable. Uh, this features, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, anyways, this features uh, 25 keys, um, they are not full, uh, fully weighted, but they have a very springy feel to them. Uh, they're convincing, but I would have liked to seen them with a little bit more uh, weight to them. Uh, overall, though, they're very nice. Uh, they are the same keys used on the um, LPK uh, 25, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but that would be the um, portable production keyboard that Akai has, and the drum pads are the same ones used on the uh, LPD 8. Uh, basically what they did is they took the two of them and they smashed them together and they created this. Uh, it's, what's awesome about this as well is that it also runs completely, I don't know if you can see that, off of micro USB to USB uh, power, which just plugs right into the side of your computer um, and you're ready to go. It's plug and play for both Mac and the PC and uh, features a built-in arpeggiator with full octave capabilities. Assignable knobs, and you can assign each of these for a different thing. Uh, now, this uh, is a MIDI controller, as I was saying. So what that means is that the sounds are not actually on your um, the MPK. What that means is that these, uh, well, basically think of this as a remote control, a giant remote control that you plug into your computer, and say that when you hit this one, it turns the channel. But instead of turning the channel, it, you know, it's C major, C minor, whatever. It's a it's a drum hit. It's a you know synth, and you can assign whatever you want to each one of these. Same with the drum pads. And then here, what you can do, it's real cool, is you can uh, have it to where it'll change pitch, uh, change tempo, and you can assign each one of these. Now this is compatible with GarageBand for those of you out there who have just you know simple GarageBand, uh, no you know other programs. And the easiest one that I found for this to program is actually uh, Ableton Live. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is real quick, I'm going to plug this in to my MacBook, which is sitting off here to the side. Um, but here I'll show you the cord that comes with it. Uh, this is just the cord, you know, it's just a standard uh, micro uh, USB to USB. And so I'm just going to plug this into the side. Okay, and I'm going to plug in the MPK and you're gonna see the pads are all backlit so they're gonna light up when I go ahead and plug it in there you go so here right now you can see that pad bank one is on oh I forgot to mention that I apologize uh, not only is there eight pads and these are actually uh, also assignable to as effects but you have two banks so effectively you have 16 pads total you can switch back and forth between the banks uh, here is your arpeggiator uh, is it? I can't see it. Here it is. Right there you turn it on. Okay, and here's your tap tempo. Uh, if you don't want to use the built-in tempo modulator inside your program, you can tap it and it will speed it up or slow it down. There you go, as you can see. Down here you have your octaves. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. You have your octave up, or octave down, I apologize. And you have octave up. Alright, so let me get you a better shot of that. There you go. Sorry about that lighting. Um, I'll get a close up here in a second where you can actually see it better. But right now, I'm pulling up Ableton Live. And uh, what's awesome with this is when you plug this in for the first time, uh, it, co well, it comes with a CD in a box, and that CD installs an editor. I'll have a, a little video of showing that here in a little bit at the end of the movie. Um, but that editor allows you to uh, basically assign, mess with these and assign them, change uh, 
how it sends out your signals, what does what. Uh, it's pretty cool. I uh, wish it had been a little bit different, but you know, that's okay. So right now, like I said, I have it plugged into uh, Ableton Live. I have already pre-mapped and pre-programmed my, uh, my functions. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my uh, MacBook volume up, and I'm going to show you. So here, for example, here's drum pad. Just, oh, sorry. I have the wrong one open where it's not set up. Give us a second. All right, there you go. Wrong pad, that's what it was. Uh, so basically, just... There you go. You see they light up. They are velocity sensitive, so... So you see they all different have different noises assigned to them. Uh, down here we have... Uh, uh, maybe I didn't assign these, but basically it, uh, oh, that's why, again, octave up too far. I'm going to go ahead and turn this around so it's easier for me to uh, use. I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit, have you zoom in here. So... So it's pretty simple to use, uh, very easy, and extremely portable. Um, let me one sec, give me a second. Uh, oh yeah, weight two pounds. Uh, shipping weight two point five. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, dimensions. This is a uh, six inches by thirteen point six by uh, one point two inches in uh, width. So it's really nice, really light, guys. Uh, I don't know how much I can stress that to you. Let me zoom back out here. Sorry about that. Uh, it's really light. Like, honestly, I uh, in my EDC video I talk about carrying with this me with me every day, and I really do. Uh, it's really awesome. Inside here you have all kinds of little um, things you can do. I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull up GarageBand and see if I can uh, show you that. So one moment while I uh, exit out of Ableton and open up GarageBand. Okay. And if you guys would like a video showing how to set this up, um, how some presets and whatnot, just go ahead and comment down below and uh, let me know, you know, what program you're using. I'll see if I can get a hold of it uh, for the video and uh, show you how to set it up. But overall, so far, I've been extremely impressed with this. Uh, performance is great. Like I said, super portable, uh, real nice. Here I got to go ahead and open a new project up. Uh, okay, we'll start it with a basic piano, uh, Kai test. Okay, now the thing with GarageBand is, uh, these aren't individually assignable. So, for instance, if I want this half of my keys to be violin for some reason, and here I want synths, you can't actually do that in GarageBand. It just functions basically... If you're on a guitar, it's just, you know, the notes go up in succession. If you're on a piano, so forth. And these actually are included in that succession. So right now, I've got... Uh, so there you go. You get the point. Uh, basically, here. Oh, that's real low. You can't hear that. But here's an example of the uh, velocity sensitive. You can't actually hear it right now, but if I hit it hard, or here. So there you go. And it's really awesome because it records directly into your uh, garage band as what you play. So if I want to play, uh, ah. All right, there you go. Sorry, I haven't played this in a while. Ah, uh, you get the point. I'm sorry. But it takes a little bit of accustoming to get used to. The keys are a little bit smaller than a normal piano.